Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the sixth episode of the Shauna Stitches podcast. And if you're just checking in for the first time with me, uh, thanks for checking it out. And if you're coming back, uh, thank you so much. You can find me on Ravelry. My username where you can find all my projects and project info is Shauna825, all one word. And you can find the podcast group on Ravelry under Shauna Stitches Podcast. And you can find me on YouTube also under Shauna Stitches Podcast and Instagram under Shauna Stitches. I mentioned uh, last podcast uh, that I'd be doing a giveaway at 250 subscribers. I haven't reached that yet. We're currently at 208, so please click subscribe if you want to be notified of my upcoming videos and uh, also to help us reach 250 so we can have a giveaway. I still haven't figured out um, what I'm going to do for the giveaway, but uh, I'll find something good, I promise. Uh, I did forget to mention that today is September the 10th, 2016, and I forgot, um, or I guess I didn't forget, but I didn't, I haven't podcasted in about two and a half, three weeks, just due to a weird work schedule, um, so I think I'm back on track now, and you'll notice my background is different if you have watched before. I'm in my dining room today, and I'm not really liking it actually because the lighting isn't very good in here but I had all, well not all of it, but I had a lot of my stuff already on the dining room table so it just made sense to try it out in here. Um, I apologize if I seem scatterbrained or look like I have huge bags under my eyes or something, but uh, I slept a total of two and a half hours last night. I went to bed at like 2.30, woke up at about 4.50 and tossed and turned for an hour and could not fall back to sleep. And I know why, but I will talk about that in a little bit. In case you're wondering what I'm drinking, this is stash tea. Yep, stash tea, and it is salted caramel. Is that mate? I think it's called mate. It's pretty good. Uh, let's see. I was making my show notes, and I seriously thought I had no finished objects, which would have been kind of lame, but I do have one. You've seen it before as a hoe. It is my Driftwood Socks by Mina Phillip. I do have both of them here. There's a close up of the yarn. Hopefully you can see that okay. It's really dark in here and the colors aren't showing up quite right. Uh, again, these are the Driftwood Socks by Mina Phillip. I did a 20 inch or 20 inch a 20 count row count uh, two by two rib on two and a half uh, millimeter nine inch circulars for the whole sock. I did a fish lips kiss heel and a standard rounded toe. I really like this pattern, and these are perfect colors for fall. So I'm gonna get some wear, especially now it's getting cooler. Uh, whips. I have another hoe. I have the Pebble Sock by Mina Phillip. I'll put this on a sock blocker so you can see it better. There you go. So you see this uh, pattern has a nice texture to it. Uh, this is the Ice Yarns Super Sock, which I didn't write down what the fiber content is, but I think it's a 80-20, maybe it's a 75-25, one of the two. Um, again, my standard sock pattern, which is the 20 row, two by two rib. Um, I like to do 90 rows for the leg, so a total of 110 um, before I start my heel. I did a fish lips kiss heel, and then the foot and a rounded toe. And if I remember right, I tried a new toe on this one. I think it looks a bit rounder. It's the Hermione's Everyday Sock Toe. I'm still trying to find the perfect toe. I mean, I like this one, um, but I ended up decreasing more than they actually said because I thought, oh, I always decrease to 10 and that'll be right. I think the pattern stops at 12. Uh, 
uh, next time I will stop at 12 because it just I think it will fit better for my foot. Uh, let's see. Oh, I do have a really exciting project, which is brand new, you've never seen before. This is the Tangled Mess is what it is. It's the Waiting for Rain Shawl. And there's the front. I have done two of the short row sections. Kind of see it's hard with me in the background, but I uh, hope you get the idea. And I have done um, the version with stripes. So I guess it's not really the version with stripes, but uh, it's a two color version. The main pattern is written for only one color, but they do have an alternate. But it doesn't really tell you where to put the stripes. So I'm kind of just winging it. I did a little math to try and make the, the stripes even across. Um, but I still have two more short row patterns to go or repeats to go. And of course they get longer as they go. I think it ends about 400 stitches per row and I'm right about 300. Um, so this yarn is my very first uh, lace weight project. And I actually really like it. Although when I switched back to fingering yarn, which before was super thin to me, um, it feels humongous. So it's just kind of kind of weird. Um, I am using my Haya Haya Sharps interchangeables. I started out using, I think they were wooden. Oh, they were horrible. They had a blunt edge and trying to work with lace weight and a blunt edge does not work. These are three and a half millimeters. I don't recall if the pattern called for a four millimeter or a four and a half, but I definitely went down in size, but um, I really don't think that's gonna be a problem. I still feel like this is gonna be really big enough. Um, and then the yarn, which I mentioned, is Lotus Yarns Tibetan Cloud. And um, one of my coworkers ordered some yarn. I don't remember where she ordered it from, but the company sent her these, just freebies. She didn't order them or anything. And she can't use animal fibers. I guess she's allergic or it irritates her skin or something. But this is 100% yak. And it's really soft. You don't really think of yak as being soft, but it seems to be. Um, so this is totally washing out, but it's a purple color. I wish you could see, it's got like little speckles of red and green and pink that you can actually see as you're, you're knitting it up. It looks really cool. And then this is sort of a dusty rose. Hopefully you can see that. And, um, I thought the colors went really well together and I was trying to find a project to, to make and the waiting for rain shawl just seemed perfect. But the funny thing about it is, now that I've gotten this started, guess what this reminds me of? I think this is the Cheshire Cat Shawl. Not saying I don't like it, but that's what it reminds me of, the Cheshire Cat. And those are the really two works in progress that I have. I did not get any work done on Persian Dreams Blanket this week, still, am I on chart three or four? I don't even remember. Um, not that I don't want to work on it, I just, um, I picked up that shawl and I really have been knitting very, not, I can't talk, knitting very monogamously on that and then um, those pebble socks I have been trying to get done for Mina's Beyond Vanilla knit along. Um, which is in her um, Ravelry group. But I don't know now if I'm gonna get that done. I just, I really have felt like I have so much stuff on the needles that I want to slowly work on getting things off the needles and having less new projects. It's always very exciting to start a new project, but it's kind of overwhelming because I only have so much free time and then I wanna work on everything that's on the needles and nothing's getting off. and. Quite honestly, I'm literally out of sock needles and I have a lot of sock needles. So yeah, no progress on Persian Dreams, the Caramel Latte socks or the Blueberry Waffle socks. I think I have other things on the needles too, but I haven't worked on those for a while. So those are the most recent ones. Um, 
I do have another whip though, which I almost completely forgot about. Uh, so I haven't worked on this literally in years. I'm gonna say three years, going way old school. This is Cross Stitch Project. And there you can see, it looks like nothing at this point. I know that. Um, I bought this so long ago that I don't even remember what count this is, but I think it's 32 count linen. It's really small and the project is so humongous that I'm literally going um, just over one. So um, corner to corner, if that makes sense, rather than skipping one. Usually when you do linen, you'll, you'll cross over, which essentially makes it a 14 count. And if I did 14 count on this, it'd be ginormous. So anyway, that's a work in progress. I probably did mm, three hours of work on that. And <laughs> the sad thing is it feels like I made no progress. The chart itself is, I don't know if it's pages numbered. I don't have a good page number, but um, I think it's like 20 pages. It's huge. I'll be lucky to finish it before I retire. Um, and I know you can't tell what it is, and I think I'm going to wait to tell you. So it's going to be a surprise project right now, but I will tell you that it is uh, from an Etsy shop by the user Diana70. And she has hundreds of projects. I think they're mostly all um, formatted over from pictures, but they're really cool and uh, they're all huge projects, I think. I don't think there's any that are small. So if you want a project that will take you the rest of your life, go look her up. <laughs> uh, she's got great deals though. Um, okay, acquisitions. I have a lot. Well, not a, oh, I have a whole lot more that I didn't grab. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Seriously, how do you forget that you ordered a ton of yarn? I mean, like, a ton. Um, in fact, that was one of the things I wanted to mention. I'm putting myself on a yarn diet, which I'm doing okay at. I think I literally have enough sock yarn to make close to 100 pairs of socks. It's a bit ridiculous. And yet, when I go look at my yarn, I never seem to have just the right thing for the pattern that I want to do. It makes no sense, because I buy all yarn that I like. I, I don't even understand it, but that's a tangent, and I haven't had enough sleep to go off on that tangent. I don't know, maybe that's why things aren't making sense and I'm forgetting that I bought a ton of yarn. So anyway, let me go through the things that I wrote down on my show notes first, because the things that I remembered that I bought. Uh, I have a sock blank. And this is a very um, unique sock blank. I've not seen one like this. It's this really long tube. It's really long. Like, it could be a scarf. I could wear it as a scarf and wrap it like a million times. I don't even need to knit anything with this. It's just ready to go. There we go. <laughs> um, anyway, it's by Lisa D. Originals and it is Merino Cashmere Nylon 801010 in the color Bernie. And it is beautiful. I mean, I was first attracted to the color. I had no idea it was this Oops, I'm unraveling. I didn't know it was this sock tube. As you can see, it's actually a tube. Um, there you go. See it? Um, but like I said, super soft, gorgeous colors. Pinks and teal and purple. And I don't have a pattern picked out for this yet, but whatever it is, it's gonna be gorgeous. I think I might just wear this for the rest of the show. Except for that I keep unraveling more. That's no good. Because she uh, attaches the end to the end that unravels. So hopefully I quit unraveling. Um, and I got one skein of Hue Loco yarn. My very first Hue Yoko <laughs> I really can't talk. Hue Loco yarn. Um, she did a 
sort of auction or, or quick sale on Instagram. And she posted just certain things that she was trying to get rid of. And uh, so for a slight discount, I got this skein here. It isn't quite showing up the right color. It's, it says it's teal and it's a tweed sock, um, 8015 merino nylon. It kind of looks more accurate back here. Um, but I think it's more of almost like a robin's egg blue than um, teal. And maybe that's why it was slightly discounted, but it's beautiful and it will make some great socks. And uh, something I'm super excited about because I set my alarm to get it is the Legacy Fiber Arts Winnie Sanderson. This is the most gorgeous color. Of course, I love orange, my favorite. I love fall, my favorite. And this is just perfect. The greens and the orange and the maroon. I absolutely love this. Again, I don't have a pattern picked out, uh, but whatever it is, it's gonna be amazing. Um, now on to all the things. No, 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 one more thing that I didn't forget about. I bought a quick knit or something like that. It's a loops and threads from Michaels. Where's the, where's the logo? Loops and threads. So this, you crank the handle and you can see these, um, the teeth are moving. And so this little gadget will knit for you. It knits, uh, but it does not purl, and it will knit in a tube or a flat panel. I can't remember the name of the other one I was looking at. Uh, I mentioned it in a previous podcast, but it was super expensive, and the reviews online said that this was, <coughs> excuse me, that this was pretty close to the same. And I even want to say that this might have been knit on one of those because um, again it is a tube and it's a very wide gauge uh, four stitches to the inch is what uh, the machine that I got does and what the other ones online do and that one there that I showed you was 40 or 44 stitches I think um, so I tried it out and I did two at a time which I frogged and then I did um, one at a time. So you can see, and I, uh, the ones I have to show you are the flat panel. I did the tubes also. From my experience, the tube actually was more accurate, um, meaning it slipped less stitches. But the more I did it, I don't know if I just started going at more even pace or I had better tension on the yarn or what it was, but uh, over time it, it slipped less stitches. Um, but I have not learned yet really how to fix it when it does slip a stitch because I'd have like, all the loops pop off like I was trying to cast off so I don't know um, but this is some yarn that I showed on the podcast um, I can't remember how many times ago a couple times ago it's a Regia yarn that I got from uh, Tesla Knits and I think I have the color way here yes but it doesn't have a name it's uh, 4455 if you remember right it just does not want to focus anyway you get the idea um, it's that yarn that I showed before and just wanted to give it a go I figured because I had the two 50 gram balls that um, for trying the double thread or double I can't really can't think today the uh, the double double yarn whatever um, that it would it would work better um, just make it a little bit easier so let me see let me see if I can find where I dropped a stitch because I know I know there's a couple on here but yeah the one thing that I don't like because the reason I got that was to see if I wanted to dye sock blanks and um, I don't know like so I the tube one that I got I think that works pretty well I feel like you could still stencil on this um, I don't really see why not. And you could just stencil around maybe. I don't know, I'd have to give it a try. Here's the other one, here's a slip stitch right there. Um, so you can see there's a loop on the front and then it just looks like a big mess right there. 
Um, so I'm gonna try knitting from these. Yeah, there's a, a really bad one right there. I tried to fix something. Um, so I'm gonna try knitting from it, see how it goes. If it's a huge mess um, and doesn't really unravel well, I probably will just forget it, at least for that. Or maybe come up with another plan, I'm not sure. But anyway, if nothing else, it'll still be kind of fun to maybe, I guess, make my own sock blanks to knit off of. One alternative to caking it up, I guess. Oh, and I do have another non-yarn related thing. I got a sock ruler. You can see I've already used it. I have my toe marked and my heel marked. Um, so I just transfer that over from the foot template that I had before. And it works really well. It's much better than like a cardboard one because it's sturdy and I don't have to worry about it getting creases. All right, so now all the stuff that I had to go grab. Um, I logged into Craftsy, I don't even remember when, uh, but they were having a huge sale. And I mean huge. Um, so I ordered probably more than I needed, but I still said, showed some self-restraint because if I would have ordered everything I wanted, yeah, we'd be in trouble. So I ordered a lot of um, Patton's Croy, if I remember right, this was on sale for, I know it was less than $4, but it was like $3.38 a ball, which is insane because I've seen it like up to eight bucks. Um, anyways, this is the Spring Leaf Stripes color. And I ordered two of all the colors so I could make a pair, but I'm just going to show one of each color because that makes sense. Uh, here's another one. This is Meadow Stripes. I love this color. I can't wait to use this. Uh, sunburst Stripes. Blues, orange, yellow, green. Again, really pretty. You know, the funny thing is I've never even used Patton's Croy yet. I already had some of it in my stash and I've thought about using it a couple times and I have to be honest, I'm really nervous about running out of yarn because I don't like to do toe up socks, but I'm thinking when I use this, I will start toe up that way. I don't run out like mid foot or something. I know I could do a contrast toe, but I don't know. Anyways, um, this one is called Singing the Blues. Uh, there we go. Gray, black, blue. Kind of a... I was going to say masculine color. It's not really, but more masculine than what I normally get. It doesn't have any pink in it. Um, This one is beautiful. I love this. This is called Rainbow Stripes. I'll try and get the color right there. There we go. The lighting in here is really weird. But yeah, I mean, it's a rainbow, but it's sort of um, a darker rainbow. In fact, it even has black in there. But it's not like your normal super cheery rainbow, but I like it. Oops, I just dropped something. Um, this one I love. This is Cherry Pop Stripes, and I can't wait to see how this knits up. This kind of reminds me of some of the um, Knit Picks Felici colors, which I still have yet to use or order. You know, there's just so much yarn and so little time. Seriously. Um, I think that is it for the um, Patton's Croy. So I ordered a couple of greens. They're both called Moss, but you can see that they're just slightly different. Uh, this one is Heritage Sock Yarn and is a 75-25 merino nylon and then this one is cloudborn fibers merino superwash sock twist and i can't remember what this is this is 80 20. like i said both called moss it is amazing the difference in these two yarns this one the cloud cloudborn fibers is so soft compared to this. I don't know if it's just because it's wound looser, because obviously it is. It's much chunkier looking, oh, but it's so soft. And I got this color. There we go. 
And this is called Maze Heather. And again, it is Cloudborn Fibers Highland Superwash Stock, but this one's just a, a 50 gram, where the other ones were 100. So the reason I bought those colors, because I know you're thinking those are not my normal colors, and they aren't. I was hoping to find the right colors for this, my Andre Sue Knits B Sock Blank, um, for heels, cuffs, and toes. So they're not the same colors at all, but I mean, it kind of matches that darker color there. So I was thinking this for the heel because it's like a honeycomb. I can't remember what the pattern is called. Wild flowers and something. Um, I mentioned it on a previous podcast. But anyway, the heel looks like a honeycomb pattern. So I thought that'd be great. And then uh, one of these for the heels and cuffs. I mean, sorry, the toes and cuffs. But then... Uh, I was at Michael's when I got the quick knit and I found this green which is not there we go it's kind of showing up right again it doesn't that doesn't look right at all um, it's still not really matching so I don't know which one I'm gonna use I don't think it has to match exactly especially because the color is called like wildflowers so it could be the plant stems I guess I don't know but I guess that's one of the hazards of buying yarn online is that even when you try and match up the color, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to match up right. And I feel like I'm losing everything right now. I'm very scatterbrained because there it is. Um, so you remember I have my penguin sock blank as well. And I ordered this. It's like a teal color. I don't think it's exactly. It's showing up more blue on the screen, a lot more blue. It's um, more of like a tealish green in person. But it is, a, a again, a Heritage Sock Yarn, 75.25. And I was hoping, I thought this was going to be more blue, kind of like how it's showing up on the screen. Um, and I thought that would match this really well. Well, it doesn't match at all which is fine. I'll find another use for it. But again, when I was at Michael's, I found this Deborah Norville. Um, it's showing up more periwinkle on the screen. It really is more blue. And this is actually a really good match for this. So I think that's probably what I'll use for the heels, toes, and cuffs. And I only bought one 50 gram ball, so hopefully that's enough. I've never ever done contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. And I really want to, obviously, because I'm buying all this yarn. Um, just some basic black. Nothing too exciting there. But some of your less exciting colors can come in handy. And then again, just a basic charcoal gray. And... I've been wanting these on um, Craftsy for a long time. And again, uh, they're 50 gram balls each, but I got two. I'm only gonna show you one. This one is called Strawberry Fields. And isn't that beautiful? Pink and yellow and cream and green. I cannot, oh, and it even turns kind of orangish. I can't wait to knit this up. And uh, these are Cloudborn Highland super wash sock super squishy and nice uh, same exact yarn different color this one's called berry basket purples and grays beautiful and you better believe same yarn again um, not showing up at all the right colors in fact it's very similar to the scarf that I'm wearing that's not a scarf uh, teal purple blue aqua there we go Cooking. trying to see the colors there and I think this is the last one I hope I don't think I've forgotten anything else um, Deborah Norville yarn again and this is in the color 
Surf. I got this one at Michael's, just like all the other Deborah Norville yarn. It was on sale, I think three something a, a skein. So yeah, I have enough sock yarn to last forever. I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and start using anything in my stash. And um, like I said, I really am putting myself on a yarn diet. I would like to not buy yarn for a year. I know I, I have enough. I could not buy yarn for a year, but I don't know if I can handle not buying yarn for a year. Um, I already did order another sock blank, which isn't here yet, and it's gorgeous. I will show you that when it comes. But I think this is the deal I'm making myself. If I make a sweater, because I really want to make a sweater, I do not have sweater quantity of anything in my stash, then I will order yarn. And also if I make a shawl, I will order yarn because I don't really have more than one skein of anything. Um, so those are the two things. And I don't see myself going on a sweater or a shawl knitting binge. So I do want to uh, knit a sweater and I do already have some shawls that I need to get off the needles before I even think about knitting any other ones. So I think that's a pretty safe bet. I'm going to see. I just love buying yarn. That's the unfortunate part. but. You know, storage is getting ridiculous, and my amount of time that I have to actually knit stuff is ridiculous. The problem is, all you wonderful other podcasters, um, A, you're enablers, B, you're all starting to dye yarn, um, and I love it all, and it's beautiful. But I'm just going to have to appreciate other people knitting it, and um, yeah, <laughs> that's just what I'm going to have to do. Let's see. Oh. So I do have something else really exciting, super exciting. This is why I could not sleep last night. So I didn't go to bed till 2.30, like I said, because I was working on this project. And I woke up at 4.50 and thought of this project immediately and couldn't go back to sleep. So I have designed something. It's exciting. Um, as you know, I mentioned before, I love the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. It's my favorite heel. Probably because it's the only heel I've ever done, but it's very easy and it has not left me wanting to try anything else. Except for that, I found the Eye of Partridge heel and it's beautiful. Except I've only ever seen Eye of Partridge done in like a heel flap. And I, there's like no part of me that wants to knit a heel flap. It sounds confusing and I'm sure if I was working on it, stitching it up, I'd figure it out. It wouldn't be that hard, but I don't want to pick up stitches. I don't really necessarily love the way it looks. It looks kind of bulky and weird. Um, and I looked and looked and looked on Ravelry and Google and everywhere else on the internet where I could think to look for a heel, uh, for a short row heel that used eye of partridge type stitching and I couldn't find anything. So, I think, hmm, pro well, I've been thinking about it for a while, but like a week ago, I got serious about, okay, I really want to come up with something because as much as I love the Fish Lips Kiss heel, let me pull out a sock that I did. Oh, all my yarn's stacked on top and it's about to fall. Oh, well, there's worse things. So anyway, so I do love the Fish Lips Kiss, but if you'll notice, and I'm not sure if you can see, because I have the light coming from this way, so I can... I mean, there's certain parts of it I can see through, even though this is doubled up. Um, there's, you know, it's it's right on the steam. It's kind of thin, and it just, in general, I think I I knit tighter um, when I'm doing the heel, probably because I have the pearl stitches in there. Um, but it just it doesn't feel super thick, and I know people say that when a sock is gonna wear out, it'll wear out on the heel, which is one of the reasons that people do the eye of partridge because it's supposed to be sturdier and hold up better. Um, so anyway, I set out to designing and totally didn't know what I was doing. Um, so this was my very first prototype and you can see the regular yarn. This is not a full sock, obviously. It's just the heel. Uh, the regular yarn is red with kind of black stripes. And then you see when you get into the I have partridge area, the way that it's worked up, you get a different effect. So I think it looks really cool. And um, 
So you can see the, the join is completely solid. You cannot see my finger through it at all. Um, that's on the side of the heel. And because of the way it's worked, it creates, this lighting's really terrible. Um, maybe you can see that. It just creates uh, some slip stitches there. So it's supposed to wear better. And can I tell you that 100% no, because I've never worn an eye partridge heel and I really haven't worn a fish lips kits heel enough to wear one out or anything. But um, yeah, I'll believe what other people say. And I really like it. So uh, then I made some modifications from that one. In fact, this one, this started out as a Rose City Roller. I was gonna do the whole sock, um, but the Rose City Rollers do have a heel flap and gusset. And I didn't realize that I should have knitted more rows before starting the heel because this like, it's not deep enough. So anyway, I quit it and I just saved it for the heel. Uh, so I started another Rose City Roller and you'll recognize this opal yarn I've used before. I put in a, um, why can't I think? A lifeline on this one, just in case I needed to rip it out and start over. So here I think, yeah, you can see that pretty well. You can see that there's some texture to the heel. It adds some dimension and some appeal. You know, I think it makes it look really pretty. Uh, you can see there, what this striped area would look like and then this stitch pattern changes it up and uh, so this one is a little slightly different than the red one and now um, I have even different versions but uh, again there is the sort of heel turn or I don't know what you call that but where the heel joins together and it's nice and thick and there's no gaps or holes and now I am to my, what I'm calling my final prototype for now. Um, these look really funny, I know, because it is literally just the heel. Um, this is what I was working on until 2.30 in the morning last night. Uh, this is the 56 stitch. Well, it's not 56 stitches. It's a 28 stitch heel um, for a 56 stitch stitch sock. I love how this yarn worked up in this pattern. It's so beautiful. I feel like this works really well on a variegated yarn because it it just adds a lot of design to it. I have my socks that I knit using this exact same yarn in a fish lips kit so you can see what that looked like there just as far as the the design part of it goes and then you can see how much that changed it up there i know it's hard to see eventually i will have these on a real sock and excuse me it'll look a lot better um so here is the 64 stitch sock a 34 stitch heel i wish you could see this better i don't feel like you're getting a good view of it and I decided to do a different color just um, for an example. Plus I was running out of that yarn. This is a 72 stitch sock and a 38 stitch heel. So I've worked out the stitch numbers for um, the three standard sizes of socks. And I am working on getting the pattern published. So I've reached out to some people for test knitting and I've heard back from some, uh, some I'm still waiting to hear back from. So I'm really excited to uh, see it on a, a sock and, and find out how people like how it fits and stuff. I have started a sock that I'm gonna use it on, but I'm not very far, not even close to the heel. And none of my millions of socks that I have on the needles are even close to the heel or they're past the heel. So it didn't really do me any good. But anyway, I am super excited about that. I'm calling this the Kiss the Partridge Heel. Because um, I feel like it's combining um, the short row heel, of course, the Eye of Partridge stitching. So 
kiss the partridge. Look for that to be coming out. Um, again, I'm really excited to see people stitch that up, see how people like it, see how it wears, see how it fits, and hopefully everyone loves it. I have written up the pattern for the 50, yeah, 56 stitches, 64 stitches, and 72 stitch sock, and um, those are out there. So I'm hoping my time frame is a month to hopefully I'll have a pair done and I'll hear back from a couple people hopefully by then um, to make sure there's no errors in the pattern and um, that it works out as intended. So yeah, so I'm super excited about that. I know I've said that a million times now, but I, I just, it, it feels weird. Like how is it that I have come up with something that no one else in the knitting world, or at least no one's published. I mean, maybe someone else has something similar that I can't find, but it just kind of surprises me because I've only been knitting since February. And granted, I do like knitting socks, but um, it just kind of surprises me. It's a little shocking, I guess, uh, but in a good way. So I know this is a longer podcast for me, but I do have something else to talk about. I know I don't normally really talk about my personal life very much on the podcast and I think it's just because you know it's still new to me and I'm getting used to podcasting and just getting kind of comfortable with it I know I still don't really like I don't talk quite like this in real life it just feels different talking in front of a camera with no one here and like no feedback and stuff but uh, I think I'm getting a little more comfortable with it a little bit better um, so what I wanted to talk about today is the fact that the 15th anniversary of September 11th, obviously September 11th, 2001, uh, the Twin Tower um, terrorist attacks is tomorrow. And um, of course, probably just about everyone watching this podcast has their story about what happened on that day and where they were. And it's just such a memorable uh, day and moment that you, you don't really forget where you were. So something I've never mentioned on the podcast, something you probably don't know about me unless you know me personally, is that I was in the Navy for six years. So from February 2001 to February 2007, I was in the U.S. Navy. And uh, so I'd been in the Navy for about seven months when the Twin Tower attacks happened. And, you know, it is true what they say, like, you'll never forget where you are when that happened. And I remember um, I was in Great Lakes, Illinois, which is where my A school was. And uh, for those of you who are not, have not been in the military, know nothing about the military, um, the way it went for me anyway with the schooling that I had was I had boot camp and that was in Great Lakes also. And then... I went to what was called Tech Corps um, because what I did in the military uh, had a lot to do with electronics and you know prior to the military I knew nothing about electronics and so Tech Corps was all about learning electronics. And from there uh, basically there were two branches that I could go off on. I could be um, an ET which is electronic technician dealing with all kinds of electronics on the ship uh, or I could be an FC which is a fire controlman which believe it or not has absolutely nothing to do with fire. <laughs> a fire controlman uh, deals with weaponry and el electronics associated with weaponry. And I knew uh, from the get go that's what I wanted to do. So in order to do that, you had to get the best grades so that you'd have the choice because um, you got to pick. At a certain point, you got to pick. If you had a score top of your class, you got to pick. As it trickled down, there were only, only so many spots available, you may get stuck with one or the other. So that was incentive to do well and study hard. So anyway, past Tech Corps, um, went on to A School, which again, I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time. I think A School, I still, I can't remember if I knew if I was going to be an ET or an FC after Tech Corps and when I started A school or if it was after that. I think I think I knew I was going to be an FC. Um, but still, we were just learning electronics, schematics, what a diode is, what a resistor is, amps, and a bunch of stuff I forgot 
a long time ago because I do not uh, work in electronics anymore, but you get the idea. So uh, on September 11th, 2001, I was sitting in my classroom uh, for a school and all my classmates were there. And, you know, I don't remember a ton leading up to it. I just remember, you know, we started class at seven in the morning or whatever it was, maybe it was eight. And for whatever reason, um, our class hadn't started on time. So we were all just sitting in class, chit-chatting and waiting for our instructor to show up. And, you know, it wasn't unheard of. An instructor could be sick or, you know, something could happen. And you know, none of us really felt alarmed, you know. We weren't freaking out or anything like that. In fact, we probably were enjoying the fact that we weren't in class. You know, we were in class, but we weren't being taught anything. And... Um, I want to say it was a couple hours and like maybe an instructor would come check on us, but they weren't really telling us anything. And then I do remember a couple instructors came in and they asked if anyone in class had family in New York and a couple people raised their hand and they asked them to step out of the room. And honestly, I still think we had no idea what was going on. Um, obviously this is before the smartphone. Uh, we didn't have computers in our classroom at least not any computer that was attached to the internet. Uh, it was just a very different time. Um, I think we weren't allowed to have cell phones in class. I don't think anyone even had a cell phone and certainly no one was getting text messages. There was no one in the class that suddenly found out or, you know, burst the bubble, I guess. Um, so after they took the people with family from New York out of the room a uh, short while later, they came back in and they told us, I'm trying to remember, it's kind of hard to remember some of the details. Um, I can't remember if they told us that one plane had hit a tower or if at that point they knew that both towers had gone down. Um, but obviously there was no learning done that day. Um, in fact, we, we ended up leaving early. Uh, I was married at the time, so I left, I, I lived off base, so I was able to go home and of course you remember turning on the the television and just watching the attack over and over and over again um that's something that really sticks in your mind probably forever <laughs> i don't think that's something you forget um and you know i remember my initial thought which i know sounds really selfish but people tend to be selfish a lot uh, especially you know you think of how it affects you and my first thought when I was hearing, you know, terrorist attack and, you know, all these kinds of things was, oh my God, I'm going to be sent to a ship without a, a true job um, because I wasn't trained on my, uh, my weaponry. And I was going to go um, what's called undesignated, which means you do whatever uh, they need you to do on the ship. Usually a lot of the, the manual labor, the not fun stuff. So, um, you know, I was just scared about that and um, obviously that didn't end up happening. But um, the next day, I remember my now ex-husband, my husband at the time, drove me to base and the line for traffic to get on base was miles long and it was not moving. So security on the base locked down uh, like you wouldn't believe. They were thoroughly searching every car, which they did not do before that. So I think that was one of two times in my entire life that I was late for work. And I had to get out of the car and walk past all that traffic that wasn't moving, walk on base, and then walk, you know, I don't even know, probably another two miles past the gate uh, to get to my school building. And then of course I get there and the instructors are late too because they're all stuck in that as well. So, you know, it worked out fine. And I don't think there was any learning done that day either. I don't remember um, us doing anything productive at all. In fact, I think we might've gotten out of class early again or maybe they called class because no one could really get on base. So, um, I guess one of the ways that it did impact my career um, I guess a less obvious way is that after I finished a school, which was a couple months after that, um, I had six months in between that school and my next school, which was in San Diego. And rather than 
going to San Diego and, and doing something or a temporary job kind of thing. Um, I was assigned to base security, uh, which actually ended up being really kind of fun. Um, not the job itself, but I worked with a bunch of reservists who had been called to active duty because of the attacks. And there were some really cool people and they had great stories. And because they were semi-separated from the military, you know, it was more relaxed and especially coming from more of a boot camp atmosphere, uh, just the whole camaraderie and, and the relaxed atmosphere is really nice. So then I went on to California and finished my school and went to my ship and that's the quick version of that part of the story. But um, anyway, just, I guess, letting you guys know um, where I was on that day and, and obviously um, that I'll never forget that. So um, I'm sure we all have a story to tell about that. So anyway, thanks for listening to mine. So um, I can't think, there, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say about that. But um, anyway, this has been a longer podcast. So Thank you for sticking in there if you have, and uh, I hope that you check out my next podcast after this one and be looking for that Kiss the Partridge Heel. And I will mention, if you go on Instagram under the hashtag Kiss the Partridge, I do have a couple photos up, and hopefully that's one of the places where my test knitters will be uploading uh, their finished socks also with that heel. So check it out, and... Um, yeah, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so we can reach 250 for a giveaway. Thanks guys. Bye.